So breaking up, a hard thing to do. And you might be wondering, what does she mean? Well, there's all types of breakups, right? We can break up with significant others. There are breakups with friendships. There are breakups sometimes even with family members. But really what I'm referencing is breaking up with the version of you that no longer serves you. I often have been asked since becoming more vulnerable and really being open to sharing more about my life. And that gets a little easier each day. I'm asked, how did you do it, Jamie? What did that look like for you? Well, as you know, I've shared, there were moments where it's a series of moments until there was one really heavy moment where I had to make a choice. Do I continue being an over-functioner and doing what's best to serve other people? Or do I choose me? There was a quote, and y'all know I love quotes, that I just recently read, actually earlier today. And I want to share it with you because it's so just powerful in my opinion. And it said, you're the most permanent thing in your life. Choose you always. And some people will go, hey, isn't that selfish? Like we should give to others. And yes, we should. But we should give from a place of desiring to give. I don't believe I ever want to again, give from a place of giving in hopes of getting back or an expectation of getting back. True believer, every time we set an expectation, you will be let time down or I've been let down anyway, every single time. So now when I give, it's I'm doing it simply from a place of, it's really in my heart that I just want to give and there's no strings attached. There's no expectation of something coming back to me in return you know, that old saying, <laughs> no good deed goes unpunished, right? So, you know, but there was a moment where I was finally really faced with myself looking in the mirror and saying, are you being true to who you are? And I wasn't. I was doing everything that I thought I needed to do in order to receive validation outside of myself. I spoke about this at great length in one of our, my earlier recordings with Rivka. I didn't go deep into it, but I shared about that. And that's no way to live. It was so unfulfilling. And I always felt like there was this little lever, right? That would kind of come across my throat inside and stop everything that was right in here in my heart that I really wanted to come out. And until one day it wasn't there anymore and the pain was too deep and too intense that I finally chose to speak up and to stop honoring myself in a way that's really who I am, my truth. If that's something you're wanting to do, I invite you to do it. It's so freeing. Okay. So what does that look like? How do you do it? Well, there's a multitude of ways. First things first is really just getting honest with yourself and saying, you know, I ain't happy the way things are. And it's scary. It's really scary at first because you don't know what type of judgment you're going to receive. Hi, say hi to Molly. She's going to whine if I don't let her up here with me. You don't know what type of judgment you're going to receive. And that's the scariest part of all because you've, at least I had lived in a place for so long that I had really gotten used to operating to where everything that I did was out of the place of people saying, "Atta girl, good girl. Oh, you're doing great, which is nice. Validation's awesome, right? But when you're actually only doing things from a space of where if you don't get that, then it's painful, that ain't so hot. So 
I started learning how to do things to please me. And that felt good in my heart and that I was validating myself. You don't wake up and just do it. It's definitely a journey. It's definitely a walk you walk in, right? And there's a lot of people I had to turn to and allow them to pour into me and teach me, show me the way. Rivka Fromm, who's my heart and thought partner, has been one of the huge ones. I had another lady that I sat with named Claudia Anderson. She's called the Truth Facilitator. Facilitator. And she was amazing at helping me like cut the cord with attachments that I had to things, right? And that was another beautiful thing. And then there were so many people that I listened to, some that I probably would never listen to again, but in that season of where I was in the space of just desiring peace, inner peace, inner peace. I found people who spoke to me and we're each going to be different in that way. For me personally, Eckhart Tolle was one of them. And I had listened to him years back and I was like, man, I can't, I can't job with him. He wasn't speaking my language at the time, but eight, nine months ago, his voice became very loud and very clear in his words spoke to me. So I started listening to him. Another one was Esther Hicks. Now today, I'd probably never listen to her again, to be quite honest. But in that moment, what she taught me was how to really zone in on staying centered and within myself. So that was the first thing I did. Had I known better, what I really would have done was gone to my God first. Now, whatever your beliefs are, your beliefs are. I'm not here to to twist your arm or make you believe as I do. For me, strengthening my personal relationship with God has been the foundation that changed my world in every single way. And so I read the Bible now. I have someone who studies with me and teaches me more. And the more I read his word, the more solid and the I become the more strength, I should say, I have in my faith. And faith is everything. Faith is absolutely everything to me. And knowing that at the end of the day, hey, we all just got a short while here on this earth in this moment. Knowing that he's got me and that no matter what happens, no matter what experience I walk through, no matter what encounter I have, at the end of the day, the trust is there with him. And I know he brought me here with purpose. And so every day I wake up and I dig a little deeper to have a more overwhelming experience and what that purpose means for me and to live it out. Okay. So some simpler things that I've done is quotes, daily affirmations. So I want to read a few to you and share them with you because these are some of my absolute favorites. And when I read these, some people may think this is, you know, woo-woo and a bunch of cockamamie. Well, okay, then don't do it. It's not for you then, and that's okay. However, it's worked really well for me. So every day I get up, and number one, I journal. In fact, I have little journals that I have all over my home. I even have one in my car. So if I'm sitting and waiting for a period of time, And uh, I I just write, I write my thoughts out and otherwise they're just stuffed in here. Now we can go speak to people, but journaling is everything. And then I read the affirmations. So if you're ready, I've been getting a lot of questions on what type of affirmations they are. So here we go. Okay. Here's one that I read regularly. It's an apology to myself. I want to apologize for not giving you what you deserved. I'm sorry I didn't give you the same amount of love back when you were busy giving others every ounce of love left within you. Ever functioning. (laughs) I'm sorry that you gave everything to people that didn't deserve half of you. I'm sorry I didn't take the time to console you when you kept breaking down in tears. I'm sorry I didn't do better to protect you against all the people that lied and betrayed you. I'm sorry you had to go through these tough obstacles when I could have made better decisions and walked away. But most of all, I'm sorry I didn't love you enough 
when you needed me most. That's your apology to yourself. That's my apology to myself. How many times have you not shown up for you? How many times have you felt like you're not, you haven't been good enough? When in fact, guess what, darling? You've been good enough all along. I've been good enough all along. Here's another one that I love. Your mind will always believe everything you tell it. Feed it hope. Feed it truth. Feed it with love. Okay. These are some of my daily reminders. Here's another one. When we, we deepen our healing, when we stop dissecting others, avoidance, emotional and availability, and begin asking ourselves why we pursue people, experiences, and things who cannot care for us in the ways that we need. There's no one on this God's green earth that's going to take care of you like you. When you got him and you, man, the partnership is powerful. The truth is, God will always take care of you. That's just what I love to read daily too. I'm proud of myself. I went through every type of pain, family issues, trust issues, heartbreak, insecurities, depression, et cetera. I went through it all alone, but I never gave up. Now this says I went through it all alone, but you know what the beautiful thing is, is I was never all alone. Had him. Okay. And then this one, I've talked about it many times, is forgiveness. And as important as it is to forgive other people when they have somehow offended you or somehow betrayed you or done you what you feel is you've taken it very personally and they've done you wrong. For me, the most important was forgiving myself. And what, when we, you know, and that's a hard thing to do. I listened to this um, podcast earlier today. And if I can find it, I'll maybe share it on my own social media at some point. But what he was saying is that when we forgive ourselves, when we truly can release all personal attachments and take it to, to what other people do, not taking things personally, that is when you've arrived and that's when you can really be true to who you are. And I couldn't agree more. And that was really, it is, it's hard. I can't, say, I can't say it's the easiest thing I've ever done. I used to take things real personally and I would get so upset. One little thing could be said and man, tears would start flowing. Anger would rise. Frustration would set in. And now, not anymore. I recognize the way other people treat you is about them and how they feel about themselves. So when the next time someone says something to you or does something to you that you feel like you're owed an apology, I invite you to say this instead. I forgive you for treating me the way you feel about yourself. How big is that? And when you start doing this and you make it a part of your, the way you walk through life daily, the way you experience life, the way you operate and you make it a part of what's really within you and how you feel. It will become a part of how you feel. It will become a part of what you know. And then you can make sense of it because I never forget as the day is long when Rivka said to me, all of this type of things that I'm saying to you today, probably on a much more eloquent way, I would think, man, you'd have to be a robot, right? To be able to live life that way. How could you not have emotion? Well, you do. But when you have the knowledge and the wisdom that what other people do, what goes on on the outside of you, it ain't about you, babe. The only way it can be about you is if it's there to teach you a lesson and you are aware enough to look at it and say, what is this teaching me? Other than that, it's not being done to you. It's just simply being done for you. And you get to choose whether you're going to let it impact you or not. 
that simple. Okay, I'm going to share just a couple more. Oh, this is a good one. Keep breaking away. Whatever it's from, whatever is clinging to you, that you know you're better off without, it's usually not an overnight process. And oh man, it's not. It is, it's a journey, at least for me. Overnight for you, praise you. Um, good for you. It's usually not an overnight process, but the very thought of committing to do so is a massive step. And it is, it's making a decision, it's drawing that line in the sand and saying, uh uh, I'm not doing this anymore. And then having discovery along the way of how you do it. And guess what? You're going to fall flat on your face, or anything like me anyway. I fell flat on my face a gazillion times. And then I'd stand back up and say, okay. I am committed. I am determined. I'm going to figure out how to do this with peace, with ease, with calm, with love, with respect. I want to learn how to live this way. So let me go back. It's usually not an overnight pro night process, but the very thought of committing to do so is a massive step. You promised yourself you'd live a free life, whether it's physical, mental, or both. You owe it to yourself to be free. The bad news is that only you can make it happen. The good news is that you can make it happen. And that's what I'll leave you with. Breaking up is hard to do in all the ways. Breakups with husbands, boyfriends, girlfriends, wives, significant others. Man knows I've had my fair share. It's challenging when you walk through that time. Family members that you no longer are in alignment with, or you're just not connecting. It hurts until it doesn't. Because when you break up with that version of you, that of where the toxicity would just be absorbed by you, right? When you break up with that version, you no longer allow that in and you recognize that everything is truly a gift. That's when life changes. Everything is a gift. Every experience, good, bad, or indifferent. I don't believe there's good or bad. I believe it's all a gift. No one changes unless they want to right? Not even you. Not if you beg them or yourself. Not if you shame them or yourself. Not if you reason, emotion, or even tough love. How many times have you given yourself tough love? You try to use a lot of willpower. Maybe your children. There's only one thing that makes someone change. Their own realization that they need to do it. And there's only one time it will happen when you decide that you're ready. I had to make a choice, I was ready. I didn't wanna live in that space anymore. I had to break up with myself. Everything that had been downloaded into here and start living from here. Because remember, every situation in life is temporary. So when life is good, make sure you enjoy it and receive it fully. Open those arms up, baby, and welcome it in. And when life is not so good, remember that it's not going to last forever and better days are on the way. Because at some point in life, you get tired of unhealthy connections, whether it be people or things. As you grow, certain things become intolerable. No longer to your liking, and that's okay. It's okay to choose you. If you're in my life and you're listening to this or watching this, if I ever stopped talking to you and I removed you from, from my life, I hope you understand how hard that was for me. See, in my history, I had a really big habit of holding on the good in people even when I could see some toxicities and things that weren't working for me, I would live out of a place of hope and see just the good. 
And no matter how bad they treated me or no matter how bad they were to me, maybe even experience, no matter how bad that experience was for me, I had hope I could make it happen, man, right? No matter how bad they treated me. So if you've been removed or maybe we've walked away from each other, it's because I got pushed back my, past my limits. And I don't think you're a bad person. I still send you so much love, but I chose me. And guess what? If I woke up tomorrow and had to do it all over again, and I will because it is a choice that I make every day, I choose me again. And I hope you choose you because you're worth it. You're worthy. So. What do you want for you? Make a decision. Choose you and keep doing it every single day. I have so much love for you. And just remember when one door closes, five more open. Because that's how God works. He makes sure when you follow the path that he's leading you down, bigger, brighter, better doors open for you. So welcome to your new life. Who you were born to be. It's a beautiful space and it's a beautiful place. Until next time, much love to you.